We are going to look at how scale factors affect three-dimensional objects. And when we're looking at three-dimensional objects, we're going to be looking at two particular uh, measurements. We're going to be looking at how scale factors affect surface area and also how scale effect factors affect volume. Um, and we're going to do it through an investigation activity. So here we're going to take this rectangular prism. So given each scale factor, label the dimensions of the new rectangular prism, calculate the surface area and volume of the new rectangular prism, and answer the related questions. So the original rectangular prism that we are going to be look at, looking at has measurements of a length of 6, a width of 4, and a height of 2. Uh, the surface area, as you can see here, the surface area is uh, 2 times the length times width plus length times height plus width times height. So the area surface area here would be 2 times 6 plus 4 plus 6 times 2 plus 4 times 2. So the surface area of this original <clears throat> rectangular prism is 88 centimeters squared, and the volume of that particular rectangular prism is 48 centimeters cubed. So in the next part of the activity, we're going to look at what the surface area and volume would be if we were to apply a scale factor of... 3. So if we apply a scale factor of 3, the first thing you're going to notice is the measurements would become 18 centimeters, 12 centimeters, and 6 centimeters because these measurements would all get tripled. Uh, the new surface area of this particular uh, rectangular prism that has a scale factor of 3 is 2 times 18 plus 12 plus 18 times 6 plus 12 times 6. So let's go ahead and calculate that. <clears throat> uh, so 18 times 12 18 times 6 and 12 times 6. So that would be 2 times 216 plus 108 plus 72, which is 2 times 396. And 2 times 396 is a total of 792 centimeters squared. So the next question, part B, says the original surface area, which we know in red up here, is 88 centimeters squared. So in other words, 88. When we take that original surface area, what are we multiply by to get the new surface area of 792? Um, and to figure that out, we could just divide the 792 by 88, and the answer here would be that we multiply by 9. We'll look at uh, this relationship later on, okay? And maybe I'll do this in blue. You'll see why later. All right, the next part of the activity, let's go ahead and figure out the volume of the new rectangular prism, which is just 18 times 12 times 6, which is 1,296 centimeters cubed. And part D says, if we take the original volume, which is 48, what do we multiply by to get the new volume of 1296? And the answer to that is we multiply by 27. Okay, uh, let's do the next part of the activity. So what we're going to do is take this, we're going to take this original rectangular prism and apply a scale factor of a half. So if we apply a scale factor of a half, uh, we'd have measurements of 3, 2, and 1, because a half of 6, 4, and 2, the original measurements, is 3, 2, and 1. Uh, so part A here, determine the surface area of the new rectangular prism. That's 2 times 3 times 2, which is 6, plus 3 times 1, which is 3, plus 2 times 1, which is 2, or in other words, 2 times 11, which is 22 centimeters squared. That's the... <clears throat> surface area of the new rectangular prism. So uh, part B says the original surface area, which was 88, times what gives us the new surface area? Now to get 88 to 22, what do we multiply by? It's going to be a decimal number. And that decimal number is 0 0.25. OK. Uh, the last part, part C, what's the volume of this new rectangular prism? Well, the volume is going to be 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6 centimeters cubed. And the question is saying, what do we do? So part D, if we take the original volume, and the original volume, again, was 48 centimeters cubed, what do we do to that in order to get the new volume, which is 6? Okay, and in order to get the new volume, what do we do? I can just do 6 divided by 48. It will, again, be a decimal number at 0 0.125. <clears throat> and 
and there we go. So the next part of this activity is actually the most important part, and we'll get to the key ideas in the next lesson. Um, but what it says, conclusion number one, what is the relationship between the scale factor and what you multiply the surface area of the original rectangular prism by to get the surface area of the new rectangular prism? So, in other words, when I triple the measurements, or triple the size, what's the impact of that on the surface area? Well, the impact is that the surface area is nine times greater. So what's the relationship between making it three times the size, but the surface area being nine times greater? Or what's the relationship between making it half the size, but the <clears throat> surface area being 0 0.25 times as great? And what I can do is actually show you, or you can pause this and make a prediction, but the relationship is that whatever the scale factor is, we square it, and that will give us how many times greater the surface area is. Or in other words, if we had half a scale factor, if I square that, that's how many times greater the surface area is, even though it's way smaller. So zero point, a scale factor of 0 0.5 means that the surface area is 0 0.25 as much. Okay, so that is the relationship. Or if you'd like to give a summary statement here, it would be that the original surface area times, and here's the important part, the scale factor squared equals the new surface area. So if we take the scale factor and square it, that's the relationship between the original surface area and the new surface area. Uh, the second conclusion is what's the relationship between the scale factor and what you multiply the volume of the original rectangular prism by to get the volume of the new rectangular prism? Or in other words, if you need a summary, if I make something, the measurement's three times as great, why is it 27 times the volume? Or what's the relationship? Or if I make something half the size, why is it 0 0.125 times the volume? And the relationship here is that this, it's the scale factor cubed. 27 is the same as 3 to the third power. Or 0 0.125 and we'll do some practice questions in future lessons, 0 0.125 to the third power, sorry, the original scale factor, I should say, 0 0.5 to the third power is equivalent to 0 0.125. So in conclusion, then we'll apply this in future lessons again. Uh, what we noticed is that the original volume times, this will take some practice, the scale factor cubed is equivalent to the new volume. Okay, uh, and we'll do the key ideas in the next lesson.